Okay, here for part two on sharks and fish, we are going to add our background and then our first fish that we're going to be able to eat for um, increasing our points. So in part one, we added our shark and our first step is that we are going to add a stage background. Um, if I click right here, it brings me into my stage. I can actually add programming to my stage and I'm going to choose a different backdrop for my stage. I'm gonna click on the magnifying glass go in here and I'm going to search for the ocean. A couple of different, this one's actually called Underwater One. Now, if you want to custom draw your own, you can do that as well. Um, but for purposes of kind of moving through this a little quicker, I'm going to use one of the pre-built backgrounds. Um, now, my next step here is to add a new sprite. So I've already gotten Shark 2, which is my main sprite character that I'm controlling. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to look for my first fish. Oop. All right. Now, when I look at my fish, I actually have one fish here, but within that fish sprite, there are multiple costumes. So I will uh, eventually be able to change what those particular fish look like. But first, we're going to go ahead and program this fish to automatically move itself throughout the program. So making sure that I have fish selected, so I'm not accidentally programming the wrong sprite, I'm first going to go ahead and add an event starter of when the flag is clicked. And I want it to be able to move on its own. Now, before I do that, I'm actually going to shrink the size of this fish. I think it's a little bit too big compared to my shark. So I'm going to estimate, let's see what 30 looks like on this. Oh, that's a little too small. Let's try 40. All right, I think that might work with the size of my shark. And yours might be different depending on how big your shark is. Um, but back to the programming here. Once I click that fish, I want it to move continuously. So I'm going to say move 10 steps. And I'm going to want it to do that forever. So if I click start right now, it just moves 10 steps. But I want it to continuously do that. So I'm going to go over to my control grab a forever loop and put that 10 steps inside of there. So now when I press go, the fish just continuously moves. Now, when that fish reaches the end of my screen, I need it to be able to reset itself back over here to the left. So I'm going to stop everything. I'm going to pick my fish up and I'm going to move it over here to the left as far as I can without touching the edge of my screen. And that's important. And then I'm going to look at what my X coordinate is. My X coordinate right now is 211 or negative 211. I need that to be important because what I want it to do is start off by going to negative 211. Now the Y coordinate is anywhere up and down that I want it to be randomly. If I just leave it at negative 64, that fish is always going to come out right here. It's going to make it kind of too easy to play this game. So I'm going to go into a random variable, which is right here under operators. And instead of negative 64, whatever number you have here, I'm going to replace that with pick random. And I'm going to have a range of numbers. So all the way to the top is 155. So I'm going to start there at 155. And then I'm going to move my fish down as far as I want it to possibly be. So I want the lowest my fish can go is right here. So it's just above the sand. That's negative 70. Now you can make yours different uh, just to make your screen a little bit different. So what that's going to do is every time I press start, I'm just pressing the start, my fish is going to start out at a different spot because it's randomly choosing a different Y coordinate. Now it's still over here on the right side, just kind of ending on the right side of the screen. So I'm going to put in what's called a sensing variable. So within my sensing, I'm going to go to and grab a touching and I'm going to go into my controls and get an if statement. So what I can do is say if touching the edge, this is what I want it to do. So I'm going to put that inside the forever so that it is forever moving 10 steps and then checking to see, is it touching the edge? If it is, then I want it to do something. 
And essentially what I want it to do is this exact same script up here at the top. Go to X negative 211 and then pick a Y randomly between 155 to 70. So I can either go to my operators and my motion and grab those. Or I can right click on this, duplicate it, put it inside of there and reconnect it. And if you miss that, I could also just retype it. So I'm going to press stop, put it up here so I can see what my code looks like. Now I'm going to press play and my fish is going to now randomly go to negative 211 and somewhere random 155 to negative 70. That's a Y coordinate, which is up and down. So now I have my um, first fish. And in the next step, I'm going to start duplicating this. So I have more than one fish. Um, and then I can start adding scoring and timing. Now, one final thing at the very end of this, you might see a weird glitch where your fish does something like this. Change the variable in here. And my fish... Let's say I change it to that. I'm just trying to make it do this. There we go. So this is the, the fish glitch where it just kind of looks like it's going crazy. And what it's doing is it is stuck inside of this loop, which is if touching edge, go to some number. And essentially what it's doing, and I purposely broke this, is it's going to negative 230, which is making it touch the edge. Remember, it says an edge. It doesn't matter which edge. So if you see one of your fish doing this, all you need to do is go to this X coordinate and make it a lesser number. And since this is a negative, I'm going to make it negative 210 or 211 like I originally had. And that will immediate, immediately fix it. Now, these numbers are going to be different for you depending on how big your fish is and how big your shark is. Um, but just kind of keep an eye out for that one particular glitch. And then you can move on to part three.